Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria. Today we're gonna do something that I think is super useful to so many of us. And that is, we're gonna make a circle skirt with pockets out of cool Halloween fabric. This project was kind of an add-on thing. I have so much going on, like I need another project as much as I need a hole in the head, as the saying goes. I don't need a hole in my head, nor do I need another project. I'm really excited to be doing this video because first of all, I love circle skirts. I think they're so cute. In addition to being a super useful base skill, no matter what type of sewing, clothing, or costume application you're going for. What I'm doing in this project is I'm actually making two circle skirts in different sizes, and I'm putting a variation on one of them. So throughout this video, I'm gonna show you how this circle skirt tutorial is useful for any size and shape of person. Today we are going to make not one, but two circle skirts. One for me out of this super cool fabric, and one for my friend Estelle out of this also super cool fabric. In doing this, I'm going to end up showing you two variations of a circle skirt. For mine, I'm gonna go ahead and make it one single size. For Estelle, she fluctuates weight more than I do, and I want to make sure that her skirt fits her for a long time to come. Now, Estelle does not know that I'm making this skirt for her. She has no idea whatsoever. I do have old measurements of Estelle's from when I've made her things before, but I very cleverly got her updated waist measurement, so I am going to use that along with the knowledge of the sizes I've had in the past and I'm gonna make the skirt adjustable so it will fit like a wide enough range that she'll be able to wear it no matter what size she is at the time all right so let's make circle skirts I love Halloween season. So when it gets to be about this time of year and the stores put out all their Halloween stuff, I get really excited. And this year, what was so cool is that there were some fabrics with a tarot theme. And the skirt that I made actually has kind of like some tarot card influence. I guess it's just the moon, but a lot of them look like tarot cards, so close enough. Also, while I was at Joann's, I found a fabric that fits my friend Estelle's persona very, very well. Estelle loves skulls and snakes, and this fabric I found just screamed her name to me. Once we have the fabric ironed, we are ready to go. Now, in order to figure out how to cut out the circle pattern pieces, we're gonna need to use some circle math. That's right, it's geometry time, yay! Are you guys ready? This is the whole reason that we sent you to geometry class, so you could make a circle skirt. I'm just kidding, there's other reasons, but sometimes this might be the most important one. It's really important to know a couple things about circle math. So in a circle, you have the circumference, which is all the way around the outside of the circle. You have the diameter, which is all the way across the circle, and the radius is half of the diameter. Important formulas here are diameter equals two times radius, and circumference equals diameter times pi, or two times radius times pi. That's all the math we really need. The other thing is that we have two circles in each circle skirt. We have the outer circle and then we have the inner circle where we will cut out for the waist. Mostly we're worried about that inner circle based on the waist measurement and the outer circle we just get from the length of the skirt. To figure out that inner circle, we're gonna need our waist measurement. So I've written down here the waist measurement and the length that I want the skirt. To get the dimensions, to cut the pattern pieces. I'm going to first add some seam allowance because I want to put a zipper in the back. So we're gonna take that measurement, that's the circumference of the desired waist cut, so waist plus seam allowance. Now remember circumference is pi times diameter or pi times two times radius. So to get the radius of that little cut, 
we're going to need to take the circumference, divide it by 2, and then divide it by pi. And that is the radius for your inner circle. Now, if I need to cut the circle skirt in two pieces, I'm going to need to leave enough seam allowance for each of those pieces, so I might want to add more seam allowance if needed for however I'm piecing it. Your outer circle, you're simply going to add whatever your length is, remember to include seam allowance for a hem, and then you'll be able to measure your outer circle from there. So I actually cut out my skirt not thinking about pockets, so I intended to cut it in the back and make a back seam where I could put the zipper, but because I want to put pockets in these skirts, I also need to cut my pieces in half so I can put pockets in the side seams. So even though you can make a circle skirt with basically like just one continuous piece of fabric, you can cut it in the back for a zipper. If you want to put pockets in, you kind of need seams where the pockets go, or at least some way to access them. I'm going to go ahead and put the pockets in the side seams. It's pretty straightforward and it makes sense. It's easy to do, so we're going to do it. And that said, for most sizes, and because I'm putting side seams in here anyway, I'm going to go ahead and base this pattern off of like two pieces, like a front and a back piece, and then we'll just cut the back piece in half so we can put a zipper seam. Now, in addition to showing you guys this video, I have put together a PDF tutorial with written sewing instructions for making the circle skirt with the pockets. And if you want a little bit more help, that tutorial is going to include the math that I'm doing in this video to create the circle skirt. However, if you want some of that math done for you, I am also including pattern pieces that you could either project or print out on a printer in several standard sizes. So you could also adjust those as like a starting point if you want. The other thing you need is a waistband. You need to make the waistband obviously big enough to go around the waist of your skirt and then plus seam allowance in the back and you can make it as tall as you want. I like to make it maybe like an inch tall or so. So I'm going to make it double that plus a little bit more so I can fold under. You can obviously make a very thin waistband if you want or a very thick one. It's totally up to you. So I am well underway on both my skirt and Estelle's skirt. What I've done on both of them is sew the side seams with the pockets inserted into the side seams. So to do that, I had to first attach the pockets onto basically the side of each piece of the skirt. So four pockets attached to, you know, each piece of the two sides, so four pieces or four side pieces. And then after that, I sewed all the way around the side seam, basically catching the pocket so the pocket is the extension of the side seam. And what that does is that makes it so <laughs> you can stick your hand in there. So the pocket is attached to the front and the back piece of the skirt, and then, you know, the side seam is attached around the pocket, but the pocket is still left open. Honestly, if you don't put pockets in your circle skirt, it's actually a lot faster to make it. 
So what I need to do next is I need to sew the back seam of each skirt. And when I do that, I need to leave enough open that I can install the zipper. And I also need to put the waistband on the skirt. And then I need to hem each skirt. Before getting started today, I went to Starbucks and I got the pumpkin spice latte iced. A little side note, I've always found it so fun to be like, you know, the whole thing about pumpkin spice being basic and like pH wise, pumpkins are actually acidic. So I like to play with that though. <laughs> Really, the pumpkin spice latte is definitely basic, I think, based on how much milk and dairy is in here. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think the pumpkin spice latte is acidic or basic? Who has tried? Do you guys have litmus paper? Have you tested the pH? If you have, please let me know in the comments. I want to know what the pH is. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> The zipper that I picked out is nine inches. You can pick a different length if you want, but the thing is you have to make sure you leave enough room for the zipper when you sew the back seam. So I sewed my back seam up to where the bottom of the zipper would go, and then I installed my zipper. Using my zipper foot, which can be adjusted so that I'm sewing on the right or the left side of the foot, corresponding to whichever side of the zipper I'm currently sewing in. To hem, you can fold over twice. You can even use bias binding or something cool if you like. I surged the edges and then I just folded them over once. For Estelle's skirt to make sure that it fits her throughout a range of sizes, I'm going to do something where I make it adjustable on the sides and I'm going to do a little thing where I put a couple of tabs in there and I tie a ribbon through them so that I can sort of gather the sides in using those tabs and that ribbon. And that's something that I want to introduce as a way to make your circle skirt fit even if you are different sizes. So if you do that, you're going to need to make the circle skirt to the largest size that you expect yourself to be or to require. And then those tabs are going to need to fit all the way down to the smallest size that you require. So if you need, for example, a range of like 12 inches, you need to make sure that those tabs will allow you a 12 inch fluctuation. You want a four inch fluctuation, they need to allow a four inch fluctuation, you know, whatever you need. And I actually need four of these, so I need two per side. So we're basically going to sew these into little tubes, and then we are going to make them into little tabs that I'll be able to thread ribbons through. Okay, so here's where we're at. This is super cool. So I created these four little pieces, rectangles. So what's gonna happen to these is that they're going to become loops. And this is my genius idea here for how to create a little system for size adjustment. So they're gonna be loops and then there's gonna be a ribbon that ties them together. So basically we're gonna make sure that there's enough on each side so that they can be equally pulled in. And even at your largest, you can still put the ribbon through there and tie a bow and it'll be super cute. So 
it's a style no matter what size you're at. If you want to do this for your skirt, it's important to know like how much fluctuation you want available in your skirt. So you're going to need to put these onto the skirt in such a manner that you can pull it and it will go tight enough for your smallest waist measurement. It's okay if you put these further apart because you can always like have some space in between where you can still tie a ribbon and have a nice little bow. But you have to put them at least far enough apart to scrunch in the skirt to your smallest waist size. So basically we've got those two loops and they are sewn right on there to the waistband. So if I pull them a little bit tight, some of the waistband is behind it. So that'll just kind of get folded back in there. Here is how the sides look if we tie them a little bit smaller. I like that extra little pleat that it gives it. I think that's really cool. I love how these skirts are just so spoopy. At least I think that's the right word. That's like spooky plus cute, right? I don't know, can you guys let me know what do you think spoopy means? And do you think these skirts qualify as spoopy? I actually love that circle skirt so much that I made another one. These Halloween fabrics are just so good. I think this one really pops with all the rainbow colors on the black background. If you find some inspiration from this video, please do tag me on social media. I would love to see what you create. I'm Daisy Victoria everywhere. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon who help me so much to continue creating amazing content like this. I hope you all have a wonderful, magical, spoopy day. 
and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.